Uh, hello and welcome uh, everyone. This is a pre-recorded uh, lecture for tutorial uh, for week three's tutorial. Actually, we did conduct the class, and many of you were there. And I could, when after the class, when I saw that whether the lecture was recorded or not, there were glitches, and the whole file could not be retrieved uh, due to uh, space issues on my hard drive. So what I've done now is uh, what I'm doing now is uh, I've just uh, I'm just uh, re-recording uh, what was conveyed in that tutorial okay so this tutorial basically covered uh, two main aspects that is linear regression uh, this week covered two main aspects that is uh, linear regression and uh, uh, probability and we'll do a few questions uh, that will help you solve the assignment okay and also cover the concepts that were done in the tutorial uh, so the first question is uh, given some data, you need to find the best fit, covariance, correlation coefficient, and things like that. And also, you need to estimate the weight of a person of, say, height 152 centimeters. So here is a data set. It has height and weight of, say, five individuals. And you need to calculate some statistics. Okay? Let's go and do those. First is covariance. Now, covariance is given by... Uh, Covariance is given by this formula where it's uh, the uh, mean value of x, uh, x minus xi and y into y minus yi. So it, it's basically summation of x minus xi into y minus yi divided by n minus 1, where x is your mean of all your x uh, values, that is all your xi's, and y is the mean of your all your y values, that is yi's. And n is the number of data points, which is 5 here. Uh, we subtract one here from n because this we need an un, uh, we need the covariance of a sample. For covariance of a population, you just write this as n. So this formula here will this minus one will not be there when you're cal calculating covariance of a population. So it's summation of this entire thing divided by n itself. But for a sample, it is n minus one. Now here uh, x the mean of x values is 157.6 and y is 63.4. This you need to calculate by hand from uh, these values and then covariance you just substitute these uh, values from here and the table into the formula here so you need to add your sigma uh, your your you need to add x minus xi into y minus yi so for example here x your mean of x is 157.6 and the first value first set of xy values is 165 and 72 replace that in uh, here so 160 uh, this is your first xi x1 that is 165 and here you have 72, that is your y1. So x minus xi, the x minus x1 into y minus y1. That's your first value. Then the next value is uh, mean of x minus x2. The x2 is what? 171. Uh, and then uh, again, mean of y minus y2. Y2 is 76. And you keep doing this. And then at the next term, I add the next term and so on until you add all the five sets of values. And then divide by 4. Y4, n, n is 5 here, the number of uh, data points. So n minus 1, that is 5 minus 4 is, uh, 5 minus 1 is 4. And when you calculate this entire expression, you get 126.7 as the covariance between your variables x and y. So a good thing to note here is that uh, your covariance can lie anywhere between minus infinity to infinity. And it's not really, it's, it, it, apart from the... Uh, the, the value itself does not indicate anything except that whether it, it, it will indicate whether x is increasing or decreasing with y. But uh, the nature of assertion is not very well depicted by this, this number because this number can lie anywhere from minus infinity. So to standardize this value, we can, there is something else known as correlation coefficient, which lies between minus 1 and 1. Uh, the correlation coefficient is calculated as covariance of a and b, that is your two sets, divided by uh, so your standard deviation of the first sample A into the standard deviation of your second sample, that is B. So uh, this basically, so also here in your correlation coefficient, if, it, if it's zero, you know that it's independent, uh, that your two variables are independent. Uh, also, uh, uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, minus one indicates that y decreases with x in a very proportionate manner and plus 1 indicates that 
y increases with x in a very proportionate manner. That is, you can get y by just multiplying x with some constant. Okay. Uh, and then your so here in our question to, to calculate the coalition coefficient, we have already calculated covariance that was 126.7. Divided by the product of the standard deviations of A and B. So it's 11.26, that is the standard deviation of A, standard deviation of B is 11.30. And when you calculate this expression, you will get this as 0.995. Okay, so that is the correlation coefficient. Next, we have to find the best fit to our data, that is, model our data, find the best fit. By that, I mean you construct a model here, a linear uh, regression model that can that best fits the data. And also, after doing that, estimate the weight of a person of, say, height 152 centimeters. So what I've done is I've gone to Excel and I've plotted those data points, those five sets of data points, and then uh, added a linear uh, uh, trend line. And this is the formula of the trend line. Once you plot the trend line, you can get its formula as well. That is its equation, not formula, equation. And this is the equation. And you also can uh, retrieve the R square value. R square value tells you how uh, Good your data, your your line, that is your model, linear regression model, the line here fits your data. As you can see, say that the line is very close to all these data points. So your R square value is very high. R square value goes from 0 to 1. Uh, and a, a value of 1 means your model is a perfect fit to your data. Okay, this is cl very close to being perfect. Also, in, in linear regression, when you're doing linear regression, if you just take the square root of R, that is square root of 0.99, you get the correlation coefficient. And you get, actually, if you do that, uh, you can see that if you take the square root of 0.99, you get the correlation to be 0.995. Okay? Uh, and then you have to put the relevance and if it's increasing or decreasing. Since it's increasing here, the R is, a, if you take the square root, if you take the positive value of that, that will give you the correlation coefficient. Now the next part of the question was find, to find the weight of a person of height 152 centimeters. So the, that weight, that person will lie somewhere here, 152 centimeters. And if I go to that line here, and then uh, project that point onto your y-axis, you will get your uh, 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 weight of that person of height 152 centimeters. And easier way to do this is just replace the x value in this equation. If you replace x as 152, what is what, which is what I've done here, you will get the weight of that person of that particular height, which is 57.8 kilograms. Okay, so this is just like so. What you're doing here is you're predicting after you make a model and test whether it's good, a good fit or not by seeing the R square value, you can predict the weight of these of other persons of some height using this equation. This is why we actually model your uh, data set. And this, what we have done here, is a simple linear regression model, SLRM. Next, what was covered in your tutorial was probability. So probability is nothing but the ratio of the number of events of interest divided by the total number of possible events. Okay? For example, you have the probability of a head in a coin toss. So whenever you toss a coin, you have two possibilities, okay, heads or tails. Now, if you want to know the uh, probability of head, that is the event of interest is uh, a head, then how you calculate this is you calculate, okay, how, how many events are possible, uh, how many events are you interested in, just one, divided by the total number of possible events, that is head and tail, that is two. So the probability is one by two, which is 0.5. Let's do a question based on some probability, uh, let's do a probability question here. Now suppose you have been given a drug A that has a success rate of 75% and drug B that has a success rate of 55% and both the drugs are given to a patient. What is the probability of both the drugs failing? Okay. So and uh, first you calculate what is the probability of drug A failing. That is 1 minus the probability of drug A succeeding, right? So it's 1 minus 0 0.75, which is 0 0.25. Uh, for probability of drug B failing, again you do 1 minus 0 0.55 since 55% is the probability of success of uh, drug B. So 1 minus 0 0.55 is 0 0.45. Now, the question here is asking what is the probability of both the drugs failing? Note that it's asking, uh, note that here the drug A and B are independent. It's nowhere mentioned that the effect of drug A, uh, that drug A affects drug B. 
So in this case, when the action of two events, when two events are independent of each other, you can multiply the probabilities, okay, which is what we have done here. The probability of both drugs failing is 0.25 into 0.45, these two values, and that is equal to 0.1125. So this, you can, you can multiply pro probability of two separate events happening uh, only when these events are independent of each other. When they are related, you have to know something known as conditional probability, which is not part of this course, but can be discussed uh, in, in the next class if people are interested, or you can read up on it. Yeah. It's, uh, currently, it's beyond the scope of this, uh, this course. Next, uh, you have a question where uh, when you roll a pair of dice, what is the probability that one of the dice gives you an even number and the other shows an odd number? Again, you need to calculate first, say, for a given die, what is the probability of getting an even number? So the number of possible events are 2, 4, and 6. Uh, the, the type of possible events are 2, 4, and 6. So the number of events of interest is 3. 3 by 6. 6 here because you can, you can have 6 possible events on a die. You can get any number from 1 to 6. Okay. So 3 by 6 is 1 by 2. Probability of getting an odd number again is uh, you, you can get these 3 values right, as odd numbers, 1, 3, and 5. So the number of events of interest is 3. The total number of events is 6. So 3 by 6 is 1 by 2. Now, note that again, what you get in one die is independent of the other when you toss both together. These events are independent. What you get on the event, rolling one die is independent of the other. So you can multiply the probabilities again. So probability of getting an odd and even number when you roll a pair of dice is 0.5 into 0.5, which is equal to 0.5. Uh, there was also some question on moments uh, in your previous thing, uh, previous week, which was not very clear. I, I, I will uh, also write to the course coordinator or, or whatever email I've been sent uh, uh, to contact the course coordinator regarding that question on moments. There was some question as to what is the moment about the mean, something like that. Yeah, I didn't understand the question itself. But here, I'm just telling you what moments in statistics are. The first moment is nothing but the mean of a uh, random variable. The second moment of a probability distribution is the standard deviation. There are two more moments. The third one is uh, skewness, and the fourth moment is kurtosis. Okay, we can discuss them when we encounter them in the course. We have done a little bit of it in week one and week two, uh, but not so much in detail. Also, there was a question based on, okay, given uh, uh, so calculate uh, uh, a uh, order of a into b, where x means intersection, into means in intersection. Okay, I don't have the symbol for intersection, which is why I use x. So a, a is a set of, say, all factors of 30, uh, and b is prime numbers less than 10. So list out what a is. A is what? 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 15, 30. These are all factors of 30. 1 into 30 is 30. 2 15 is 30. 3 uh, tenths is 30. Okay. We have, I've missed one uh, element here. 10. I will put that in. Uh, let's do that right away. 3 tenths are 30. 2 tenths are 30. Okay. And uh, 5, 6 are 30. Okay. You have all these uh, uh, elements in the set A. Set B is prime numbers less than 10, and that is 2, 3, 5, and 7. So what is A intersection B? You need to find the com elements common to both these sets. That is what we mean by intersection. Uh, so that will be 2, 3, and 5. And the number, so when I write N of A intersection B, I want to know what is the number of elements or the order of the set A intersection B. So we have three elements here. Uh, so the order is 3. What will be A union B? It a union B will all will be the set of all elements in A and B. Okay? And then what I've done, so that will be A union B will simply be 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 6, 10, 15, 30. Okay? That will be A union B. I've written a very important formula here, which might be useful when in your further operations when you use sets. What that is A union B is nothing but A, so the set of A plus set of B minus the set of A intersection B. This might be important uh, when you're doing uh, some problems regarding sets and intersection and probability as well, because probability you need to enumerate the set of events of interest and the set of events uh, uh, that are possible. 
yeah and there you might need these kind of operations so this is more or less what uh, the assignment is about you have questions on probability and uh, linear regression and what we have covered here in this tutorial will help you solve those okay there is a question on die again you, i would say uh, to solve that question list all the events that are possible that is 36 when you solve when you roll a die you can get roll a pair of die you can get 36 outcomes and then uh, you just enumerate all the events that you are interested in and you will get uh, the total probability there yeah? okay okay uh, so so sorry that uh, i could not record the class itself uh, because of uh, space constraints on my hard disk but hopefully i'll be able to do that from next week on thank you and see you all next week uh, tuesday 6 pm